Hello everyone, today we'll present to you the paper Understanding Users' Perception of Personalization, Autonomy and Data Sharing in a Mental Wellbeing Application. My name is Svenja Piritz. This work was in collaboration with Mohamed Kwaja, who equally contributed to his research. We also worked together with Aldo Fajal and Alexander Matic. Digital mental wellbeing interventions are aiming to reduce the global shortage of mental health care professionals in a cost-effective and scalable manner. The COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on mental health has accelerated research and development of new interventions and content in the digital mental health sector. The increasing amount of content made recommender systems more and more relevant and popular. Although personalized recommendations are very helpful for users in terms of choice overload, delivering those recommendations entails two main challenges. Firstly, how to balance autonomy and guidance. In a traditional setting for the selection of the right interventions, autonomy is secondary to the expertise of the medical professionals. However, in digital experiences, autonomy was shown to be an essential design criterion to create engagement. The second challenge is the way of data sharing. Personalizing the user experience typically requires personal data to be shared, which may impact the manner in which users interact with the app. We decided to look at these two challenges in our study and formulated two research questions each. In terms of data, we decided to look at both self-reported preferences and also app behaviors that we found in user logs. So firstly, for the degree of autonomy, do users prefer an autonomous or guided experience? And then does any of these two experiences impact in app behaviors of users? Then for data sharing, we decided to go for a personality-based recommender system. So our preference question was, do users prefer to get personality traits inferred from mobile data or do they prefer to fill out a questionnaire themselves? And then secondly, for behavior, do those two different ways of data sharing impact in app behaviors? We were really lucky that we have the possibility to work with a real world commercial app. Foundations is an evidence-based digital mental health platform designed to improve users' resilience and decrease their stress levels. At the time of the study, the version of the app incorporated 10 modules with 102 activities in total. The home screen contains a section called Other Activities for You that shows a recommendation of two activities at a time. You can see that here on the left. In our study, these recommendations were random, um, so actually not personalized, even though we told our subjects that they were personalized based on the personality traits. Here you can see our experimental design. Our study consisted of three main parts. Firstly, the onboarding questionnaire, which was followed by in-app usage for seven days with daily reminders. And finally, an exit questionnaire. As the goal was to investigate the effect of the two variables, autonomy and preferred way of data sharing, we designed a two-factor factorial experiment. With two levels of data sharing being questionnaire and data modality selection, and two levels of priming for an either primarily autonomous or primarily guided experience. Overall, this led to four experimental groups plus one control group that could be combined according to the variables that they have in common. We had a total of 218 participants with over 40 per group. Now to the results. So we found an asymmetry between in-app behaviors and preferences for the degree of autonomy. The analysis of in-app behaviors showed that primarily autonomous design with the option to access content recommendations kept users more engaged in terms of completed activity, number of completed activities and also the rating of those activities. But when we asked users for their preferred way, um, they actually reported to us that would like a very guided experiences that gives them daily targeted recommendations. So that's exactly the opposite. This shows that the needs communicated by the user do not necessarily result in quantitatively better engagement metrics. The analysis of the qualitative data that we got from the exit questionnaire suggested a potential compromise between the two different experiences to satisfy both engagement metrics and subjective user preference. That could look quite similar to designs of Netflix and Spotify where you know where you can get really good recommendations and recommender systems, but overall your experience is completely autonomous. So for the data sharing, we found that users prefer questionnaires, but app engagement is unaffected. So the majority of users prefer to complete a personality questionnaire over providing their mobile sensing data. However, when analyzing the actual app usage, we found no impact of the data source on how people interacted with the app. Interestingly, the time taken for completing a personality questionnaire, which, which had 10 items, was comparable to the duration of completing a form to obtain consent for the usage of smartphone data. So this shows that a questionnaire could be a valid option for the personalization of mental health applications in the future. That was it. Thank you very much.